What's going on guys? Welcome to Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. I am your host, Rotornet44, and today we are at BC Helicopters. And we're not going to be doing any training flights out of BC Helicopters today, but we have something new. Something that just came out, I believe it was yesterday. So HCG, as some of you may know, has on um, July 1st, Canada Day, Canada Day, I should know that since I released the scenery on the same day, released this helicopter, the Cabri G2, and as of yesterday, he has updated it. It now has what I believe is fictional, but a uh, sprayer modification for it. And like I said, I do not think that this is a real application right now. I don't think the Cabri is used for sprayer. I may be wrong. I don't know a ton about the Cabri. I know it's, I believe it's French, <laughs> but that's about all I know about it. Um, but yeah, I've been flying this thing around here recently, and you know, we got three whole fields of grapes over here. So here's the first field. We got one over there right beside it, and this one back here, as well as some tree crops back there, but you know, you know. Maybe we'll spray those if we have some time. <laughs> but for the main purpose of this video, I wanted to get out and just do something fun with this helicopter. I've been flying it all around, and of course not on video. But, you know, you can only fly to and from locations so much until it gets boring. So let's go ahead and let's jump inside the helicopter. Look at that. <laughs> I'm used to, uh, I've been flying bush planes too much. I went to the wrong door. <laughs> <laughs> this helicopter, like most helicopters, is flown from the right seat, whereas normal fixed wing is flown from the left seat. Alright, let's go ahead and let's check and see how much spray we have on board here. We got in pounds, 140 pounds in each tank. CG is well within limits, so we are good there. And... For any of you guys wondering how to operate the sprayer functionality in this aircraft, you have this switch right here that toggles the folding and unfolding of the arms of the sprayer, and then you use parking brake. I believe set parking brake it is, is the key command, which I have toggled onto my trigger switch here just to make it nice and easy, and that flips on and off the spray effect. So a small fact about this helicopter is we're picking up here. Unlike most helicopters here in the U.S. where you actually use left pedal to counter torque, the uh, Cavalry has a rotor that spins the opposite direction than what most of us are normally used to. So you actually apply right pedal in this helicopter. Like, I believe most European helicopters are like that. Again, <laughs> don't quote me on that, but I believe they are. And then I also find that it helps to, you know, give a little bit of rear and to the right on the collective and you just kind of feel it out as you're slowly picking up or sorry on the cyclic as you're slowly picking up on the collective so we're going to come into a little bit of a hover here and let's just go ahead and creep out over the barbed wire fence and out over the field here we'll just take things really slow and you know i think that i am going to hop over to this field back here in the back first and we'll do, yeah, we'll, we'll spray this field here first. Now, something we need to watch out for on this helicopter is if we can pull it, let me pull it into a hover here real quick. We'll pull it into a hover. And you can notice, real apparently, I am full right pedal right now. And you can see how slowly we're coming around. But if I come to a stop here, maybe. <laughs> working on my hovering skills since I've been in GA a lot, and I press on the left pedal, you'll notice that I have so much more control to the left. So that is something, as we are spraying here, that we're going to need to take into account. We're going to want to try to make as many turns to the left as we can, because to the right, it's going to be really stubborn. So let's get over here, out over this uh, tree crop field, and... We're going to make a turn to the right, <laughs> kind of massaging that right pedal along. And we'll get the nose to come around eventually here. There we go. And we're going to start off on this row here. Once we approach the ends of the rows, we're going to have to be a little bit high. But we're going to start off on these three here. 
I'm going to flick on the spray, and as we go to the outside view here, we can see that we are spraying. So I am definitely going to be a little sloppy for my first couple of passes here, just because I have not... <laughs> actually, no, I think about it, I have never sprayed in any simulator, I do not think. Not with a helicopter. I have with aircraft. Come out over the yard here a little bit, and we'll go ahead and make our turn around to the left. As I get a little bit more conf confident with this, <laughs> I'll probably start making better and better passes. But as you can see, my turn radius and everything right now, holding altitude, is pretty subpar. We're also fighting with a little bit of a crosswind, so as we come over that house, we're going to flick on the sprayer. And we're going to try to stay right down the row. We'll start picking up some altitude as we come up to this house here. Turn off the spray, we do not need that. Flip the camera around there so we can get a better look once we come off of our pads. We're going to start a slow, gentle turn here to the left. Now this one is into the wind, and I'm losing altitude. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing very good today. I've been primarily flying bush planes for about the last month, so... Yeah, my helicopter skills are a little lacking right now. And as I mentioned before, we do have a crosswind from our left right now, which is definitely not helping us out any. So as we come down to the field here, turn on the spray again. We're going to stay a little bit higher. See, we're dropping a nice trail there. Starting to drift a little bit. Boy, oh boy, am I sloppy today. <laughs> and this is using Airland FS for the flight dynamics and physics of this helicopter. So I really do like Airland FS, but one thing I've noticed is sometimes the physics are a little bit weird with it. And what I mean by that is if I come to a sudden stop or something like that, you'll notice that sometimes the aircraft just does not behave like it does in real life. Like it doesn't, it's almost like there's no momentum like carrying it through like a churn or something like that. It almost seems like it hangs up every so often. So, yeah, one thing that I have noticed <laughs> about Airland FS that I'm not too thrilled about. But you know what? Helicopters aren't even supported by the SEM right now, so... Can't really complain, right? At least I'm actually getting to fly a helicopter. <laughs> It's two years on right now since the sim was released, and we very well could be uh, not even flying a helicopter right now still. Now, I am absolutely sure that if you looked on a GPS, you would probably see that I am <laughs> most likely missing quite a few rows right now. But, you know what? Luckily, I am not doing this professionally. I'm doing it on a sim. So, yeah. We're just going to give it our best. Even if our best isn't that great. There's a little bit tighter return. And we're going to go down the outside here since we got a clean shot. Spray on. And then we'll swing out a little bit and we'll make that left hand turn and grab that last pass. Yeah, as you'll notice here, you see as we pulled up how fast that came to a stop. 
with as much forward airspeed as we had, that should have well continued into a climb. Like my, okay, it was a little bit of a steep climbing angle, but it wasn't that steep of an angle. Not to slow down that fast. I should have had plenty of forward momentum to carry me through that. So yeah, just just one of the little grievances. All right, we're gonna come down through the trees here, hit that last pass. So instead of pitching up, we're just going to pick up on the collective and we'll just go a little bit higher. <laughs> I think that's going to have to be the compromise for now. Alright, let's start a very slow turn to the left here. Try to keep some altitude. And I'm thinking because we got BC helicopters there, basically we've got BC helicopters and we got that construction supply yard on the opposite end kind of smashing the field in there. I'm thinking we may have to do some passes like from this direction towards the airport. So let's try one on this end here. Turn our spray on. And back off with a short pass. Kind of go out here towards the airport, maybe circle overhead of this hangar here in the parking lot. And we'll line up for another pass. Actually, let's go. We'll go around the hangar. Since we're kind of low still. And that'll just keep us in a nice gentle turn here. Yeah, we may have to go out a little bit farther next time. So. Spray on. Definitely a botched pass that time. So I am running on STEM Update 10 Beta right now. And this is actually the first time I have tried DirectX 12. So if you guys notice some artifacting, at least on my screen, I'm seeing some artifacting basically right off the nose right now, just to the right of what looks to be a tall red building. There's some artifacting of some sort going on there, so if you guys see anything weird, that's what's going on. It's, uh, I'm guessing probably Direct X12. But you know what? If I'm in the beta, I'm going to try all of the options. Alright, let's get set up for another pass here. I'm going to basically be heading towards that second building there on the left. And as we get to the border here... We'll flip on the spray. And turn it back off. Another short pass. And we're going to go a little bit wider to the right this time. That way we make sure we get a good pass down this other side of the field. And maybe try a little bit tighter of a turn. We'll bring it a little bit more collective when we're in our turn here so we don't lose as much altitude. And we'll turn it over the hangar this time. We'll just do another pass right here since that's what we're lined up for. Only bad thing about doing that is now I've set us up for a turn to the right. And as you might have remembered me mentioning before, we don't have really good authority to the right, although. It seems to be handling it all right, so I must have got just the right <laughs> amount of uh, amount of rotation out of it there. All right, we'll set up for another pass here on the right side of the field. Spray on. That's pretty good.
The only thing that would make it better is if the helicopter was a little bit more fluid in turns. But like I said, I'm pretty sure that was a uh, that's an issue with the Airland FS in general, not necessarily the helicopter. At least I say that because I know it acts like that in quite a few of the other helicopters I fly around, like the R44 and H125. Spray on. Speaking of the R44 and H125, I need to probably be getting some more helicopter content on the channel. <laughs> it always seems like a running joke that even though my channel name is called Rotornut44, I never seem to find time to fly helicopters in the sim. It's always bush planes or something like that. So I need to get a little bit better about that. Start doing some more helicopter content. I think just at the time being, it's, a, it's easier to make videos doing general aviation aircraft like bush planes, fixed wing aircraft. Just because, you know, you land a, uh, <laughs> a PC-6 Porter on a, you know, 100, 200 foot gravel bar. It's a little bit more impressive than landing a helicopter on a, you know, 200 foot gravel bar, 100 foot gravel bar. Even a 20 foot gravel bar because it's, uh, yeah, there's no competition there. Another good pass on that one. One video that I would like to do in this general area here is if you guys have watched any of Pilot Yellow's videos or uh, Bradley Friesen, I think it is, they have always gone out to a bunch of landing locations, helipads and such, in the mountains. Get a little close for comfort on that one. And, long story short, uh, you can look it up. Bradley Friesen's got a video of basically raiding helipads. He's done several of them, and I've actually started going out and trying to find some of these locations. And if I can find a couple more of the locations, I'd like to do a video just kind of doing that. Just, you know, I don't know if I'd make it a comparison video or anything, but... Yeah. It'd be something kind of fun to do. It would give us a mission to do. Alright, and in all honesty, I have kind of lost track of where I should be spraying at right now. But I think we are pretty close to where we should be at. I think we only, if this isn't the last pass, we only have one more pass left after this. Alright, let's set up for our last pass here. The final stretch down the back side of that building there. Here we go, diving in. Spray on. And spray off. There we go. Alright, so let's get a uh, pass on the old BC helicopters here and see what the Windsock's doing. I believe we're still looking at a crosswind. And we'll land at BC helicopters real quick. We'll stow our sprayer arms. And then we'll go park at Abbotsford. Uh, you know what? Wind is pretty much down the pipe now. So that's good. That makes landing here at BC helicopters real easy. So we'll make an approach into pad one here. Though I don't know why it's crabbing so much. I know the wind direction is correct on the windsock. Let's get that nose to come around. Meh. 
It's not the best landing, but I'll take it. So our frame rate now is definitely hurting. <laughs> we started off spraying. Of course, you know, this is so close to uh, Vancouver that you get a little bit of performance set from Vancouver. But at Abbotsford, we were sitting at about 50 FPS when we started this, and we are currently down to a whopping 35, 36 FPS. So <laughs> I think it's time to wrap this up before this video turns into a complete slideshow. So we got our sprayers stowed now. Wow, that lags if you move the view around. So let's not do that. Let's go in the weight and balance, because I'm curious. The... So it doesn't look like it actually took any weight out of the tanks, because we're still sitting at 140 pounds on each side. So I don't know if that actually drains it or not. Interesting. And why is it still in pounds? Oh, okay, so it doesn't switch. Oh. Yeah, okay. I see what it's doing, because it's a payload weight, not a tank. Or not a fuel tank. Or not treated as a fuel tank. Damn, Rotor. Speak correctly. <laughs> Alright. Enough chit-chat. That went to left pedal on that pickup. That wouldn't have been good. Let's put that right pedal in. Let's start easing up on the collective till we get light on the skids. There we go. I'm just going to leave her in a hover here for a second because I want to see how the nose weather veins. Yeah, she's going to start creeping around. Alright. Let's go ahead and do a percher off over the corner of the field here. And we'll go land over on the ramp here at Abbotsford. Luckily for you guys, it's not a very long flight. Well, more so lucky for me, because I'm the one flying the thing. <laughs> I will say, though, I think this is the most stable helicopter I've flown. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I don't have a lot of experience with cavalry helicopters. Uh, so I don't know how stable they are in real life. But most helicopters I've flown in real life, like the R-44, are pretty squirrely. Let's try to, I don't know what the symbol is over here, but let's try to land on that symbol. Let's give us something to, something to pinpoint. And I guess we should try to get the nose pointed into the wind, huh? Make it a little easier on us. <laughs> okay, I, I'll take it. It's definitely better landing than I have been doing in the last couple of days. <laughs> well guys, thanks for joining me on this video. Definitely a nice change of pace. I haven't done any spraying with a helicopter before. Hopefully as time goes on, Flight Dynamics 4 helicopters will improve a little bit more and <laughs> maybe we can make some sharper turns <laughs> like I'd like to be doing and not have to baby it around all the time. But hey, you know what? It works for now and it's fun nevertheless. So. Thanks for watching the video. If you did enjoy this video, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up so I know that you enjoyed the video. And leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you're liking the style of videos and if you what type of style of video do you like more? Do you like more laid back videos? Do you like more edited videos? Just let me know. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. As always, Rotonut44, over and out.